Welcome to a new test and teardown video. This time I think it's going to be a repair video. I got this really, really nice and beautiful oscilloscope from Philips. It's a PM3358. It's a 60 megahertz, 100 mega samples. It's uh, an analog a digital a scope. With all the fancy features and stuff, it's done here on a little LCD screen. It's a little bit unconventional when you're using it uh, about where A and B are, the, how it's done via menus instead of the, uh, you know, the normal way to interface uh, an oscilloscope. So it's uh, very, very different from a, you know, a user's point of view. Uh, so they got a little bit uh, unpopular about this big, big change in the layout. But that's, of course, because it's everything is computer controlled and controlled via a digital interface to do all the normal analog stuff. So, of course, they just had a cool idea to let's redesign, let's reinvent the whole thing. And then let's see how the world like this or not. We got menu buttons here to do different uh, features. This is the classic thing. But I was told there's something wrong with the power supply. So my first power on will be with the lid off. I will have my uh, monitor, uh, current uh, monitor on, and then I will uh, carefully inspect what is going on. So this is the first look inside the unit. It is a very, very compact build. And here in the left corner, we've got backup batteries, probably for setup and settings and all sorts of stuff. Maybe you're remembering some stored curves and stuff. And uh, those are, of course, uh, brand new. So that is not the problem. The power supply is this very big PCB right here. And it's actually only connected to the rest via this flat cable and this power cable here. It's probably some different voltages and stuff that goes in this cable somewhere in here. And uh, that cable is probably trace rotation, right? Going into the CRT control board. There's actually quite a lot of stuff here on this uh, CRT board. And then there's another board full of stuff here at the back as well. Maybe there's also some deflection amplifiers and stuff. I see some transistors with heat sinks on down there. So, and this is a much more modern oscilloscope. So it's all made in plastic and click, click, real fast mounting and all that. It's optimized for, yeah, faster, cheaper production. So I think when it's open like this, I dare to uh, power it up and uh, see what happens. Okay, let's try and uh, power this up. And... Oi, 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 oi. <laughs> what, did you hear this? It goes, wee, really, really loud. So that is uh, definitely not like it's supposed to. <laughs> okay. Here is uh, my take on the next step. I removed the two connectors, the two outputs from the power supply, but there's a third one that goes directly to scale illumination. So here's my thing. Now I'm not loading the power supply, right? Let's try and turn it on. Look at that, scale illumination. And see if I dial here. The power supply is actually working. The power supply is using 19 watts, 18 watts. And I do hear some, some sounds. So I better turn it off again. So I think there's probably something in the power supply that is not good because this 19 watts of idle here, that can't be right. But that proves I'm, I'm actually able to power up the power supply without the scope. So that's a big help so I can continue. But now is a big struggle here. Get this damn board out. And it's not super obvious how this is locked in with little plastic lockers. And you need to kind of 
unclick these by pushing here and pull there and whatnot. So without breaking these as well, because this is old brittle plastic. And I got one here and I got another one here. And of course I need to remove this on off switch. So this is the bottom side of the unit. And look what I find. Here is the locking mechanism for this little piece of plastic. And this is the power supply PCB, right? So that PCB is in here and this prevents the unlocking of this plastic part from getting out that way. So there's no way I would be able to just pull it up because it's locked in by the PCB. So now we need to look, so now from, we the look top again. from the top again. So what we need to do is unlock the PCB first, pull the PCB a little bit, and then we should be able to unlock this mechanism to get that away. Otherwise we can't get the PCB up, right? Because it's, oh, maybe it's not supposed to, yeah, maybe we're not supposed to remove this holder here. I don't know how this works. Yeah, it's completely broken. Here is the secret revealed how this works. Definitely push this piece in. Now the PCB can be lifted. And then you can also take out this piece if you want to. But I don't think you need to really. And it's of course the same trick up here. I was about to blow my last fuse, I must say. Here is another little super dummy here. This handle needs to be like that, lifted out. Otherwise, little, this little plastic thing here goes through the board and locks the board so you cannot pull out the board. So there, here you have it, the struggle. And this piece of plastic here, now I had to cut a little bit of it. Because no matter how much I pull this out here, it was still in the way of the PCB. I mean, how the heck did they put it in, in the first place, when there's no space? That is just a, uh, the unlocking mechanism from hell. Of course, that was a struggle. But now the PCB is out. And I can ins inspect the power supply real carefully. Look what I find. This is a classic Rifa input capacitor and it is of course as always cracked. So that one of course I want to replace. Here is the inrush NTC resistor and that looks like it's badly corroded. So look at that. How can it look like that? <sighs> this can't be good. So what I want to do is I want to power it up. So those two out here, that will be mains input. And then I'll just try and inspect with my thermal camera what is getting really, really warm here. I'm sorry for all the mess here. I got good news. I've been sitting here and playing around with the power supply. And I know now where this funny, funny tone is coming from. And that tone is the over voltage protection system that is kicking in and then this trigger signal from the over voltage protection is going down and triggering here and this is shorting the plus 48 and the negative 48 by this uh, transistor and then the regulation I'm sorry about this I've been soldering a little bit and uh, that short is of course using a lot of extra current and then the current sense system here is triggering a shutdown of the oscillator and of course then the voltage drops and then the voltage protection releases and then there is a new restart so it goes we and it's of course due to this type of power supply cannot handle zero load. So there's something in this scope that is not um, 
it's like drawing any current. And this power supply is not able to go into a stable voltage regulation without any loads. So I've put in only 200 milliwatts of load on each of the outputs. And now all output voltages, they're nominal. And we got a voltage regulation. It was that simple. So now I should be able to connect the scope and figuring out what is not getting power somewhere in this scope. Uh, I guess there will be a blown up uh, f fuse or some other stuff is maybe shorted. I will figure that out in a, in a few minutes. But I've, I'm of course um, also testing the high voltage during all my experiments uh, with all this. Uh, I removed a um, an inductor. Uh, on the 48 volts, so this uh, 48 volts goes also to the high voltage converter, and that is out here. And then the output from from the tripler should be about 15 kilovolts. So of course I take my high voltage probe to a voltmeter like this, and then you'll see 15 kilovolts. So yeah, we definitely got the high voltage as well. And as you heard. There's no more funny sounds. So I think I will uh, try and continue a little bit now. So now I'm about to assemble the power supply and all that and see what else is working here. I forgot to mention about this uh, Rife capacitor. Of course, when you replace Rife capacitors, please don't put in a new Rife, right? They, they just, this is just a stupid, sucky, bad brand. Let's put in a better one instead and of course here we go it took quite a long time for it to boot up with the CPU and all this stuff over here but let me turn this off we got a line look at that probably I need to figure out how to add more channels and all that kind of stuff I didn't really worry about all this yeah, that is channel. How do you do all this? And that is the thing with this completely different menu system here. Uh, I'm just totally, totally lost. But it seems to be alive. Ha <laughs> ha! Great! So there's also a very, very cool uh, digital menu and the a digital system uh, in this with full storage and all that kind of cool things. This is a one megahertz sine wave signal. And all you have to do is click here to switch between the digital or the analog scope. So we can see you've got all sorts of cursors or it's automatically measuring the frequency. And then I can put in some other cursors. And that's of course the double the time because I put them double like that okay you can of course do whatever you want with the cursors or you can do calculations you can zoom this and you can zoom that it's like really 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 cool this scope and then you go back to analog mode and of course it's completely different in analog oh, let's go back to digital in digital mode you can see i can go slower but i can't go any faster than this so this is a 500 nanoseconds per division and this is a one megahertz signal so if i give it two three four okay so this is 10 megahertz and then you can't see anything so it's not really usable for anything over 10 megahertz in the digital mode but let me go back to one megahertz and switch into analog mode and let's um yeah let's play a little bit with this variable let me give you that much okay so this is one megahertz and let me give you 10 megahertz that's the same right let's do a little bit like that so that was 10 megahertz let's give you 60 megahertz and it's even the same i would actually expect this to be attenuated at 60 megahertz so this one is actually 60 megahertz analog without attenuation how about that? That is a little bit unexpected. 
and I am of course using a 50 ohm termination right here and my generator is of course in all that impedance kind of thingy goody stuff right so so this is good I mean I'm super happy about this it's really working already the fan is a little bit loud can you hear that maybe it's not so bad when you put on the lids and all that here's my vertical delay line test so this is a 100 kilohertz signal and this is a one microsecond pulse and i'm actually giving you two nanoseconds of rise time just to be really really bad and i believe this white cable you see that goes around here that is actually the vertical delay line and this is why it is possible to show you the leading edge of this signal before it's actually triggering on this signal. So that is how it works. Here's my x-axis position. I just moved it a little bit so this line is not hidden behind the grid. Now, of course, you need to have a lot of intensity so you can see it because it's like really, really fast. But this scope is actually able to pick up this rising edge. I can, of course, zoom in a lot more. And then we can see this. This is 50 nanoseconds uh, per division. And uh, how about if I give you a little bit of uh, rise time here. So I could, could probably give you 20 nanoseconds. And then my trigger, see? Now I can adjust my trigger all the way down. And then we can see this nice, smooth rise time. That's of course much more visible. Well, we can of course uh, also do the same with the fall time. So now it's a lot more visible. Definitely a fast, fast and super nice scope. It only took me a few minutes to get you know a little bit familiar with this interface I would, after a few days i would probably call it super nice <laughs> but right now it's still a little bit yeah where is this when that and how to do that and but i mean okay i'll learn i'll definitely learn this within the next few days oh yeah let's let's try this in digital mode yeah that is of course possible well, look at that. Now you can even see the the samples like that, right? Oh, we can even go faster. That is so cool. I wonder if we can do single or we can... Oh, that is dots. We can plot this and we can plot that. Definitely need to learn how to do all this. How do we uh, play with the... Nah, I don't know. I don't know anything yet. To be honest display load oh there's another Ooh nah, i'm just poking around with stuff i don't know anything about yet but i'll definitely uh figure this out real soon look at this i changed the repeat to one kilohertz it's still a one microsecond pulse and it's coming one kilohertz so this is a uh, it will be probably impossible to see in analog mode you see there will be no brightness left well there will it is actually in this scope is also very 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 bright so let's go back to digital mode so there's actually a little funny thing with this scope so this is one kilohertz 900 oops and then it stops so that's 400 hertz then it actually works but if i and then it, it is still the same pulse right so it, no it's just gone how is that possible I should be able to I should be able to give you one of those pulses like every hour if I want to but I don't understand why 
This is not happening. Hmm. That is weird. To verify it's uh, not my generator that is uh, stupid. So here's 90 hertz. Or I can do 400 hertz. You know, it's the same pulse. I can even do 1 hertz if I want to. No? I cannot. Then it should go in normal mode. Exactly. It's just the auto trigger that was uh, fooling it around, right? So yeah, or 10 hertz. And then it looks a little bit live again. So there, there you have it. The signal generator is not to blame for the problem. So I can take my signal here, and plug it in here. But this scope will not trigger on this. So there is definitely some kind of a frequency trigger thingy uh, about that maybe trigger delay or trigger set up something with trigger is it i don't know what it is this is a we are in trigger coupling what have we got here pulse dc of course it must be dc right let's try again with 400 hertz then we know it was working, right? Yeah. Oh, it's super, super critical with the level now. Oh, that is funny. So now it is in DC. I think that is DC. That is definitely some kind of a weird thing going on here. So let's try and poke around with... Yeah, now it works. So that is 10 hertz, and of course, here's our pulse, 1 hertz, and there you have it. <laughs> it was of course possible. And you see here now, there's a new update every second, and it still captures our 1 microsecond pulse. So yes, of course it works, but there's definitely a weird lead in that I cannot explain. And it is like insanely critical with the trigger level. I wouldn't expect it to be like that, really. See? If I touch this, touch it like that. And then it's gone. Hmm. Well, well. And then there's this trigger mode single. And then you have your signal stored. Let's see a little bit more of how this scope is spilled and all the rest of all this stuff is made we got i think this is the analog interface uh the normal one right and then here is a digital interface you got a big fast chip like that and that's probably the ad converters they are um, i think they run quite hot so they are cooled by some copper springs look at that so this is the top here and this goes spring down here right and uh, they even tried to make this black so it's radiating heat better i think that is why right the way that everything here is assembled it's just press click and here you unfold this by pushing here and then it clicks out and this is how everything is there's just one screw here in the top that goes here and this is just for shield there's a thin little metal shield here and that connects to the top chassis and that is kind of how it is done i really like the different colors here on on coax cables so that's good for um <laughs> to avoid problems right and look at that different flat cables different sizes of connectors so you can't swap this wrong also good if you want to uh, hire uneducated people to assemble stuff real fast and real easy and avoid errors what have we got here we got also some little shield wires that one went in here there is actually quite a lot of electronics in this one look at that so this is the back side of this board and remember 
There's also that one on top. And then there's that one at the bottom. Those are full size that. And then another plug-in board here. And I think we've got like three or four boards stacked in here as well. Holy moly. There's a lot of electronics. And it's really, really nice with the different colors on, on the connectors. That is nice. We got orange and green and all that kind of stuff. Beautiful, super, super packed. You're not going to believe this. There's another one down here at the bottom. A very big board as well. And then, look at that. Inside this. <laughs> I find five more boards. Holy crap. This thing is just so packed with electronics. It's amazing how the heck is this possible? That is a big surprise to find that much stuff in here. So here's how it goes. Down here is a little connector and that one. They go in here, right? And then you can take out this screw and then bend this piece off and then we get access to all the fancy smancy computer stuff ooh yo yo look at all that goody goodies here again <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm totally impressed I took out this middle one because that looked most impressive. Here we got the RAM, some 68005 and another nasty one here. I don't know what that is. So that's a four layer board. And I am still hunting down leaked capacitors and I still don't find any. How funny and cool is that? This got to be the CPU card. So it's a 68008. So I think this is the 8-bit version of the 68000, right? And then there is an 8-bit EEPROM. We've got RAM. There's some more RAM there. Actually, it looks like this IC here is correct. But that is not the case since the unit works really good and it's running at 16 megahertz wow that is high tech and uh, we don't have any date codes that is what i was looking for so 90 yeah this is from 90. there's another one I did not expect to see that. And what is that? A 68681? It's got zone crystal and all that kind of stuff. And then four TDA 1540s. Hmm. One thing that is a little bit funny with this PCB is look at that. Three out of three. One out of three. So it's a three layer PCB. How rare. So I think I'm done playing with this scope and thank you very much for watching. Please come back real soon. There's only one last thing to try. Well, that's of course the XY deflection mode. And that is enabled by hitting this mode here. So here you see the normal input. Looks really funny. So this is XY mode. And it's of course a little bit funny to see this position here is not doing anything. Variable here is doing something. Variable here is doing something. This position is doing something. And X position is doing something. Okay. There's some sort of a funny AC kind of thing here. I don't understand exactly what is going on. It should be in DC mode. Yeah. Alright, see ya. Bye.